Hey, what's happening guys? I'm going to do a little bit of a different kind of video today. I'm going to try and answer some of your questions. We'll use some visuals where I can. And, uh, I don't know, just try and switch it up a little bit. Keep it interesting. Um, another thing, a few days ago I mentioned that I'm going to try and knock off the reviews for a while. It just doesn't seem to be possible because stuff just keeps rolling in. So here is what I'm going to do. I'm going to limit reviews to one day a week. And I'm thinking it's going to be Fridays. So give me your input on this and let me know what you think. That being said, let's get started and answer some questions. First, to Digger D, my Canadian friend. Uh, you say, wouldn't it have been easier to use a voltage divider to bring the 5 volts down to 3.3? And he's talking about the uh, LoRa videos I did over the last couple days since the lures were only uh, good up to 3.6 volts. Well, you'd need to use a... Uh, oh, good lord, what's the word for it? No, I don't want to change anything. Go away. You'd need to use a device, which I currently can't think of the name of, to change both the power and the signal voltage. Because if we look here, the Arduino signal voltage depending on your Arduino and we're, if we're just talking about nanos, megas, unos it's 5 volts so that's the same as um, the power output so that would be no good alright uh, George, George Chambers can you do more than one byte again on the LoRa videos now we're using the Arduino serial write command so you can write a value, which would be a byte, a string, which would be, you know, a, a group of alphanumeric characters in quotes, or you can send an array of bytes. So there you have it, buffer and length. I think that's pretty cool, don't you? Next up is Eddie, who lives near an airport and military base. <laughs> Will this device interfere with them at all? Also, I'm thinking of a programming language. Would Python be a good choice? Uh, Eddie, I'm not a programmer, man. I muddle through. I learned basic back when I was a kid, and the last programming course I took in college was in Turbo Pascal. So... I can't answer that question for you, but I can give you a pretty good guess as to the military frequency question. When I was in the military, we used mainly high frequency and VHF, which is very high frequency. Uh, you can see here military aviation frequencies are 225 to uh, 400 megahertz. Go away, Windows. And the LoRa is up at what 856 to 900 megahertz so no it won't be a problem that uh, that band of frequencies is not allotted to anything okay who's next ah uh, the Venomator okay what did Venomator say uh, I'm sure it probably does a little bit more than turning the LEDs on and off. Yes. Basically, the LoRa is just a way to take your Arduino data and put it into a low power, long range radio signal. A good place to check out is the LoRa Alliance, and you can see a lot of information about what they have going there. But to answer your question, you know, you can send bytes, you can send strings. You can even set up your own WAN with it. No problem at all. Okay, Michael Padovani. I hope I said that right. It's not Padovani, but either way, you know who I'm talking about. Michael, again, asking about the LoRa, says, does it list the power the transmitter is at? And he's wondering if it's more efficient than Wi-Fi. Well, if we look here at the spec sheet, that would be the wrong one we can see the RF output power range is minus 4 
to 15 dBm. But I think what you want to know is the current. So there's our transmit current, about 43 milliamps. So I'm not quite sure what Wi-Fi current is, but I'm guessing it's pretty much lower. And you can see that if you put it in sleep, you're looking at half of a microamp. Man, that is nothing. Uh, okay, the only Allen talking about my super simple Arduino frequency counter. How low can it read? I think I got it down to around 100 hertz, but not much lower. Okay, next up, Mr. Verk. I don't know how to pronounce that first name. He wants some information on an oscilloscope. Um, the Siglin SDS-1202XE or the Handtech DSO-5020P. Um, your, your choices in the, this range of scopes is, is pretty wide open. But I'm going to recommend to you the Handtech DSO-5072P which comes pre-hacked from the factory at 200 megahertz, one giga sample per second. Um, you say you have about 370 pounds to spend, I think, what, about a buck and a half to pound. Um, the 5072P from Amazon runs between 220 to 260 dollars. So I guess that would probably be like around, what, 200 to 220 pounds. It's available in my Amazon store, but you know, I'm not telling you to buy it from there. You can get it anywhere. Just remember, Handtech DSO 5072P. All right, Chris Teodorski. He is talking about the MR300 antenna analyzer. His came uncalibrated. How do you calibrate it? Well, Chris, it's pretty easy. You go into the config menu. You, by hitting the config button, you go to calibrate. And you hit... I think I just hit either the up or the down button to get it started. And when you first start, you're going to leave the connectors unconnected. Then it wants a 50 ohm resistor, then 150 ohm, and then I think like 450 ohm. So that's all you do is put the resistors on there when it's telling you. All right, next up, Masood Hossein. He wants to turn on a relay for 20 minutes or in another for 30 minutes. How does he calculate the, resist, the capacitor and resistor? Well, that's your RC time constant. So the easiest way to do it is just type in um, RC time constant calculator. This one is from DigiKey, and it's going to bring it up. So you're going to need to know voltage. Um, let's assume you're dealing with Arduino. You can change this as you need. So 5 volts. Let's say a capacitance, in your case, probably 2200 microfarad and a load resistance of 10K. Okay, that's going to give you 22 seconds, so we, know we need to increase that by a factor of 10. Oh, that's, that's pretty much about what you wanted, isn't it? So 10K and 2200. Play with these values, and you'll get just about where you want to be. It's pretty easy to do. All right, back to Digger D from way up in Canada. I don't know where in Canada you are. I just said that. How many bytes can one transmit in a string? Man, I'm just guessing here. I'm going to guess 256 bytes. Three kilometers, really. Yeah, LoRa is um, very long range, very low power. And let's see, transmission rate. I don't know if it's on here or not. Yeah, I'm not really sure about it. Let's see if they have anything on the other one. Software, AT mode, that's the UART baud rate. There's our bandwidth, AT address. 
Yeah, it really doesn't say anything, but my best guess is as fast as the Arduino can transmit. It's ultra high frequency, so it's going to be pretty fast. Uh, Phil Chandler wonders if I have input volume switched on my audio recorder. I don't use an audio recorder. I record my videos on my old Samsung Galaxy S4 with a headset mic plugged in. And I don't have central air conditioning in my home. There is a window air conditioner right by my desk. And it's extremely hot and humid right now, so it's been switched on. James Kearns Jr., are you sure this thing is okay to use with 5-volt logic levels? Nope, not safe at all. George Chambers, could this Laura be used like an olden times Loran? Okay, um, I don't know about it. Loran was, um, it was like the forerunner to GPS. I'm not sure the technology it worked on. You can connect multiple Loras together in a star configuration. That's Laura Wynn, and it's very cool. Next up, we have Rocco Ridd, who says, I would like to buy a new uh, Rigel 1054Z. How can I buy this without being murdered in my sleep by my wife? Well, Rocco, when I was a married man, I just had things sent to the office. <laughs> Soren Andresen is talking about how to display graphics on the OLED and wonders how to handle multi-layer graphics, a circle that would overlap another circle, and then when one of them is removed, the other would not get deleted. Well, there's no way to natively do that with the OLED and Arduino. The way I've done it for things that have multi-layer graphics on them is you draw something, and then you redraw it in black to make it disappear. But in your case, for what you're talking about, an overlapping circle, you would have to draw the first circle, then the second circle, remove the second circle, and redraw the first circle. It, it's just not that great. Okay. Rob Webster, I can't believe I missed the reverse cap. That was on the uh, piano synth. Well, neither can I. <laughs> okay, uh, the Aardvark guy says he's just learning and hello from the UK well hello from I'm actually in Ohio but I'm very near Pittsburgh Pennsylvania that's a good landmark to give you Mr. Lee I know it's an old video but is there a version of this for three batteries in series and he's talking about the TP4056 uh, lipo balance and charge board well, actually it's not a balance board it's a charging protection circuit I can't tell you guys how many times I've received that exact question. No, the TP4056 is for one cell only. Don't try and force it or you're going to have bad things happen. Rocco again, will you ever try the TS100 soldering iron? Yes, I will. As soon as Banggood sends me one. All right, one last one real quick here. Mick King asked, do you ever have a component that just won't solder? Yes. I've had many of them. They're usually from cheap Chinese kits. You can try to put a lot of flux on the joint, but what I found that works best is to get a Scotch-Brite pad and just kind of buff the joint a little. Okay, guys, that's going to do it for today's video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. That's it. I'm out. Peace.